He was my individ- he was my invisible playmate when I was a little kid. He was standing behind me. His name was Joe, and he was communicating with me uh, that this decision was being made, and I felt like I was there about three minutes. And I was being downloaded all kinds of information that I didn't know what it meant. But they said, you'll run into certain people in your life that you'll be able to give this information to. They'll know what it means. It's important to them. But you've got, you know, uh, things that you have to do. You've got people you need to talk to. You've got more work to do for us. So um, that was basically it. And the next thing I knew, I opened my eyes, and I was in ICU, and it was 18 hours later. I felt I was gone three minutes. And, they, of course, they buzzed the docs, and one of them came in, and he said, uh, he said, uh, I don't know what happened. He said, you flatlined. He says, you were gone three minutes. And so that's three minutes I felt like I was gone. I don't know what happened to the other 18 hours because time really didn't mean anything. And he said, there's no way you could have survived, but you did. He said, we ran out of A negative blood. That's all. He said, you were hemorrhaging and turtling. We used up O. We used in everything we could. And for some reason, you stopped bleeding, and, and you, we got a heartbeat. And that was, that was my uh, after-death experience. Absolutely thought-provoking, and that's what we do here. We want you to think about how special this one life is and make the right decisions. Don't choose evil. We'll be right back. Last night I was driving home through the Texas Hill Country, and it was dark. I was looking at all the tail lights going in one direction and the headlights going in the other. I looked out to see a distant sunset red on the sky. It was dark where I was and I just thought about how amazing our lives are, how incredible creativity is, how good and decent the innocent are. But on the other side of that, there is the wicked globalists who love death and destruction, love enslavement, love to dominate the good. I'm going to tell you right now, ladies and gentlemen, there is a lot more than what you see with your eyes, what you hear with your ears. There's a lot more around us. There's a lot of mysteries, and a lot of people have crossed over the other side and have seen what Colonel Roberts saw. We're going to go to your calls here in a moment, but finishing up with this guardian angel, with this with this uh, presence that was with you, um, you know, you've told the story in more detail before, but any other facets to it? or I mean, what was that like being on the other side? Well, I had no uh, earthly care about this place. Um, it didn't mean anything anymore. It's like it's like uh, on an average day, you leave uh, you leave your bedroom, you you close the door, and you walk into the living room. You don't think about the bedroom; it's behind you. And that was kind of like the, this this whole life. What was important was how I had conducted myself in this life. You get kind of a gold star every time you do something good, and you get a black star every time you do something bad, and those add up. Uh, your guardian angel remembers everything that you did from the day you were born on. Um, I don't know if you could call a guy a snitch or not. <laughs> but uh, I think that's that's how how all all this stuff gets reported later on is is to uh, where you end up, and you know I, I believe what the Bible says what the Bible says. Uh, I don't I don't have it interpreted. I don't need to interpret anything on it. And I know that there's a lot of things in there that a lot of people don't understand. But I, I, when I came back later on, I was able to read it and see things I had never seen before, and. There, there. People have to understand, and I used to have this problem with some of these guys that were in these militias. They could, they, they chased the bad guy up just so high in the, in the, in the, in the food chain, but they never got to the top. They didn't understand the real force that they were fighting against was Satan himself. It's as simple as that. There's good and there's evil. God is in charge of good. Satan's in charge of evil. And God gave us one thing, and that was the, that was the the, uh, uh, the the right of choice. He gives us the information, and he says, "This is what I want you to do." He doesn't force us to do it. He gives us the Ten Commandments. He gives us the Golden Rule. He gives us, you know, the stuff in Leviticus. And he says, okay, he says, now you know what the rules are. Well, Craig, you. Craig, I think that that's what our job is. I mean, not that we're perfect or good ourselves, but the people have been warned. I mean, the Rothschilds are out in the open now saying we run the government and it's a world government. I mean, in newspapers saying world government's being set up and the public reads it and then denies it, they've been given their chance. And that's what the Bible means by willful denial. You know, they wanted to believe a lie, so God gave them you know, gave them over to it. They asked for it. Go ahead. Well, yeah, it, it, it's the information's there. 
it takes messengers, it takes watchmen on the walls, it takes those those of us that, that, that are willing to go out there and, and be outspoken and say, look, folks, this is the way it is. Wake up and, and see what's going on here. Now, you have, you have choices to make, but, you know, you can't make somebody a Christian by chasing them down the street and beating them over the head with the Bible. They have to make that choice themselves. You have to give them the information and step back. Then it's up to them. If they decide that they're going to go to the dark side, so to speak, that's a decision that they have made, and they're going to end up paying for it later. If they may, if they accidentally go to the dark side because they're too stupid to understand that there is good and evil, and what is good and what is evil, and be able to recognize it, then you know they've fallen into the trap. And those are the sheep. Those are the ones that get lured into the slaughter. And there's so many of them out there right now who voted for Obama that's being lured into the into the pen. And uh, it's it's, it's going to unfold around them, and they're going to wonder what happened. They're going to say, "This isn't the guy I voted for." Uh, you know, you have good, you have evil. This guy is evil. The Clintons, they were evil. Uh, you know, the Schumers and Feinsteins and Pelosi's and all those people, they are evil. Well, you can see it in their eyes. I Man, I don't sure. judge a book by a cover. I, I judge it by its fruits. But, I mean, you they seethe with evil power. When you look in their eyes, I mean, these people are crazed. Oh, they, they know what, uh, what uh, it means to do the correct thing, and they know what it means to do the, the bad thing. Stay there, stay there. Ronnie, you're on the air with Colonel Craig Ryber. Roberts, RifleWarrior.com. Wow, I'm so honored. Thank you, sir. And to, uh, this is kind of old news to many of y'all, but to Obama followers and hopesters, any hope for real change to this ongoing uh, tragedy has evaporated when Obama named longtime Bilderberger conspirator Joe Bilderberger Biden as his Bilderberger chosen VP, chosen VP. Because, in my opinion, Obama signed his own death warrant with that selection because the evil, scheming Bilderbergers, the secret elite, now have one of their own ready to take over if and when Obama... You know, that's right, and, and, and the globalists are very, very racist at the top. Uh, I mean, that, they really uh, hate black people, and of course he's half black. He really is an African-American. Uh, I mean, his ancestors weren't slaves, as established from Kenya. Uh, but... Um, yeah, I mean, it's kind of like JFK having LBJ as his VP. Uh, I mean, I agree. I think that could be in the cards. Uh, Colonel Roberts? Oh, yeah. You know, anytime you get Bilderbergers and, and CFR, Royal Society for National Affairs, Roundtable Group, Trilateralists, they're all, they're all you know, they're in the same club, basically. And anytime you get these people involved in anything, they're going to bring that agenda in with them. And the agenda is the destruction of nation, nation states, the subjugation of populations, total control of world populations, Population, total control of world economy, world, world food, and world population. Uh, you know, population reduction is one of their deals. That's why they're really for abortion. Uh, you know, we could go on and on with this stuff, but it, but anytime you get these people involved in something, you're poisoning the water. Well, exactly. And, and look at Obama. He wants to increase funding for abortion in Africa, killing black people. Oh, but that's cute and sweet and liberal. Uh, anything else, Ronnie? Well, yeah, my question is about Obama's devotion to intensify the truly unwinnable war in Afghanistan. By the way, invaders never succeed in, uh, you know, trying to take over Afghanistan. Yeah, the guarding of the poppy fields, Craig. How's that going? Well, you know, there's two there's two facets about uh, Afghanistan. One is, you know, whether it's the, the Golden Triangle in Laos, whether it's Colombia, whether it's uh, Afghanistan, the drugs aren't going to go away. That's where the money's at. That's that's where the, the, the black elements in the world and intelligence community get their funding. That's where the, the, the big, you know, I mean, oil and drugs and gold. People wonder why the diamonds. Afghans keep fighting. It's because they're fighting over the drugs. But uh, Sorry, go ahead. You said oil. Go, go ahead. Well, there, you know, there's four elements of wealth in, in, in the world. You talk about oil, drugs, uh, gold, silver, and, uh, you know, precious metals, and uh, uh, diamonds. And those four areas right there, these people are, you know, they're in it hip deep, and and they're going to stay there. They're not going to let anything happen to that. Uh, and that's why they don't want any of it to be legitimatized. If 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 we had a war on drugs, we could stop it. But what we do is the war on drugs only goes, goes to knock down the competition. Uh, the, the main uh, players in this thing have been around for 20, 30 years, some of them going back to World War II, and they're still around. That's not going to change. So we have, you know, we have to look at that and understand that that's what's going on. As far as, as, as Afghanistan's going, there's, there's two things about Afghanistan. One is the drug market. The other is the fact that the Afghanis have always fought wars two years later. Basically, the British went in twice and, uh, you know, took the place. 
and then they the uh, the Mujahideen, whatever you want to call them, backed off and and let them have their free will until they decided that you know this place is subjugated, we're good to go. We'll send the main force home and just leave a few people here to run the place. And they did. And when they did, of course, they got attacked. And as they tried to leave, uh, they were massacred. That's so, what they always do. They always play possum. Yeah. And then they kill you when you pull your forces out or you reduce your forces. They're very patient. They did the same thing to the Russians. Uh, they're very patient. Unless you, ha- you, it's one of the deals where it's like cockroaches. If you don't kill every single one of them, you're going to lose because they're going to come back someday when you're sleeping and cut your throat. That's just the way it is over there. Well, I think patriots in the U.S. need to take a page from that if we go into real tyranny, Colonel. Well, I, I think that uh, every patriot in the United States should study history. Absolutely. Thanks for the call, Ronnie. Daryl, Fred, John, Chanel, Tom, others. Stay with us.